And uh, we are here to celebrate David's life, and we really should do that. Because one thing, though, if he knew about it, and he was going to be the center of attraction, he would be embarrassed. But there was one thing about David. He still knew where the circle was. So he was there. And uh, I don't know if you remember this or not, but when I uh, retired, 1990, 1998, when I retired, uh, David was the MC. And uh, all of a sudden, out of the curtain, in the auditorium, he comes around, and he has this putter. And this is the putter that he had for me to use, because you were like golfing. And, uh, but on the end of it, he had a ruler. Uh, so that I make sure that I get a straight line. And not only that, he wanted to make sure that I practiced, he wanted me to practice a long time. He had a miner's cap that he gave to me to prepare. So that was, that was on the retirement party. We have a couple other people here who will remember this, at least two or three will remember this. Um, we were at a get-together at Diane Ingrid's house in Morrisville, and uh, there was David Mitchell and Chris Miller. And we'd gone to a get together after, it was during the springtime. And uh, we used to get together a lot, we did social activities. And uh, we were there, and David and I were talking, and I'm not sure if Jack was there or not, but it was Chris, Chris and David Mitchell came up, and, and Chris makes a comment like, hey Dave, I understand you know something about wrestling. And within five seconds, Chris was on the ground looking up at him and said, okay, I understand Dave, I understand. <laughs> And another thing that uh, a couple of other people know, um, at least know him, Weasen, and I'm sorry, Robin's not here today, but he'll remember this. Um, one day I was walking down the hallway and uh, headed toward the teacher's room, and uh, David stops me in the, in the hallway. <clears throat> he says, Nathan, he says, let's, let's do this. Let's pretend I'm mad at you. I'm very good in the teacher's room. That's all he said to me. He walks into the teacher's room, slams the door, and I opened up, I said, David, I said, you need to come with me and we're going to talk. He said, yeah, right, I might do that. I'm not talking to you today. And I said, well, David, I said, you know, let's not put on the sheet here. He said, no, no, that's all right. He grabbed an eraser. He's only like from here to that wall. He grabbed an eraser. He took it, he threw it at me. And I thought he was just trying to miss. But I saw this missile coming through the, the air toward my head. And I ducked. Hit, hit the wall and dropped into a basket. So then I said, David, that's enough. Come with me. So I walked out and I said, I expect you to be in my office in 10 or 15 seconds. And he said, all right. He walks out and he's down the hallway. And he said, I stopped. And I said, I think that were pretty good. I said, those people, they, were, they never even looked up. I said, they were right there. They, I think they were more scared than you were. <laughs> and, uh, he says, yeah, he says, you know what? He said, I really wasn't trying to hit your head. I said, I wasn't concerned about that. I just wanted to make sure you made the basket. <laughs> so David was a character. And he was a great friend. And he was a great colleague. And before we go any further, I'm going to have uh, Dennis. First, I should introduce these people to you. Um, Dennis Al and his wife, Sharon and his other brother, Dan Dow, at the table over here. Um, and Dennis is going to say a few words. And after Dennis is through, if anyone would like, please come forward and express any memories that you have of David. And then when I feel that it's quiet enough, enough is going on, I will finalize the, the celebration. You know this. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. It's been a long time since I spoke in front of a group. I, I was principal for a number of years, so I'm, uh, I'm not used to doing it. I'm Dennis, Dave's brother, and uh, thank you all for coming to celebrate Dave's life. Like Dan said, he was a character. He had an incredible sense of humor, an incredible mind. He was extremely bright. His career was in math, but I always thought it could have been in uh, 
the art, uh, the language arts, because he could write and he could, he, he was a, a student of language and words. He picked them apart. He loved uh, jokes and he was just an amazing guy. I was fortunate because I moved away from Pennsylvania and moved to uh, Maine. And so I was able to come over and be with him a lot of times, in the summer especially. Um, I want to thank the group who organized this. It's incredible, very nice job. And uh, uh, Dan Cramsey, perfect person to do it. Uh, today what I'd like to do is uh, tell you about Dave, some things that you don't know. Uh, People who knew him as, uh, in the, uh, up at Mountain View for golf and tennis may not know uh, all the other aspects of his life, so I'm going to go through from the time he, he was born. Uh, Dave was the oldest boy in our family. There was nine of us, six, uh, seven boys and two girls. And uh, he went to school in Austin, Pennsylvania, and he went to a high school that was the smallest high school in Pennsylvania. He had a graduating class of 25, and uh, he was a serious and bright student, and he graduated as valedictorian. Of course, he only had to beat out 24 others. Uh, during his time in high school, he loved to hike and swim and camp. He was a, a, a Boy Scout. Uh, not, he wasn't just a Boy Scout. He did everything in scouting, worked his way up through, took it very seriously, learned all kinds of things that Boy Scouts learn, and uh, never made it to an Eagle Scout, but he was right up there. <clears throat> Dave was never a fan of team sports. Uh, it was, he, as you, you'll hear as we go along, it will be tennis and golf and wrestling and things like that, and individual sports. But uh, he did play basketball and baseball, which was all that was available in Austin. Uh, he played them, but he was never really good at them. Uh, he, he came uh, from a family of, uh, we were mostly pretty good athletes and uh, Dave was, but it was in individual sports. Uh, Dave majored in math at Waynesburg College in Pennsylvania, where he also wrestled there. And uh, he went on from there to his first teaching job, which was in Maryland. And that's where he met and married uh, Elizabeth Hicks, who you, all, those of you who know her know her as Wiz Dow. She's right over there. Uh, they went then from Maryland uh, to Michigan and to Oregon to, for advanced degrees, and then on to Vermont. Uh, Dave loved Vermont from the time he first got here. He just loved it. He, uh, I think he was intrigued by the persona of the old-timer, old-time Vermonter. In fact, we used to tease him that uh, how could he be have the accent and all the mannerisms and the look of a Vermonter so quickly that uh, he did. Uh, his first teaching job was Fort Leeds? Lake Region. Lake Region. Lake Region, where he coached some wrestling there. And then from there, he came to Hazen. And he always loved Hazen. I, I, I was with him a lot over the years, and that's he talked about all his friends and all his colleagues, and I, I've met a few of them for the first time today, and some of them I met again. Uh, <clears throat> he settled in here for a long career in uh, teaching math and computers, and this is where he retired from. So it's nice to have this celebration here. Dave enjoyed golf but he loved tennis even more. As I said, he was a member of Mountain View Country Club, and he was really involved in the tennis aspect of it. He and I played golf up there all the time, and we also played tennis, and I remember helping him on the courts, getting them all set for the season. I think he was uh, 
president maybe of the, of the tennis part of it? I'm not sure if president of tennis, but president of the club. Of the club. Oh. There's a lot of things I don't know. Uh, so now you know uh, some more things about Dave, but there was even more. <clears throat> he was into dousing, metal detecting, wildflowers, how to identify them, windsurfing. He was a realtor for a time at Ann Batten Realty. He loved Texas Hold'em. Some of you here have played cards with him. Uh, he just loved to go to tournaments, and he had a Thursday night game at Lance's uh, for how many years? 15, 20 years? Uh, I was fortunate to go there a number of times with him. <clears throat> Dave also was a runner. He, uh, seeing him in the last number of years, you, you go, he was a runner? But yes, he was. He used to run uh, a lot of long distance running. He, they, he, they had huskies and they would run with the huskies tied to them. He did some uh, distance running. He uh, entered three marathons and finished two of them. But that was a while ago. Dave loved instrumentals. He never was a fan of uh, vocals. He did have some uh, artists that he liked. Uh, he was huge fan of Roy Orbison, which we all are, uh, all the brothers at least. Uh, but I think his love of instruments led him to banjo playing, and Dave really took to that. He studied it, he worked hard, he got so he could, could really play well. He had a number of banjos, and uh, he, he had a number of friends who he played with. James Lockhart, for one, who's here today, he's going to play and some others. I'm almost finished. All of you who offered your condolences over the last number of months always mentioned what a great guy Dave was, how big a heart he had, and how very much he's missed. Dave's remaining two sisters, three brothers, and 12 nieces and nephews all agree with you. He was a great brother, he was a favorite uncle, and we miss him every day. and so I'm going to assume that most of you don't know me, but I was Dave's wife for 17 years. I may not be able to hold it together for this. David and I met as first year teachers at North Hartford High School in Hartford County, Maryland. We came, became friends, um, largely because it started because my grandparents had abandoned Austin, Pennsylvania 35 years before David got there. Um, it gave us something to talk about. And we became friends and eventually we decided to get married. Um, and it was a good marriage. It was the right marriage to make at the time that we made it. We were both pretty clueless about the world. Um, but we were clueless together. We went to Oregon, I got a master's. We taught for four years at the high school and just got tired of junior high kids. Um, <laughs> I got tired of spelling tests. Um, and so we decided we had no kids, we had no furniture, we had no anything except a cat. And so we, just, we packed everything we had into a, a little U-Haul and drove across the country. I got a master's in library science at the University of Oregon. While, he was, while we were there, he applied and was accepted at a master's in math program at Central Michigan, 
And so as soon as I finished my degree, we packed up and at this time, <laughs> at this time we had now a cat and a dog. And we packed everything into the car and, and, and a U-Haul and drove to, to Michigan, where I did not get a, I couldn't find a, a library job. So I spent 10 months clerking in a hardware store. And I have to admit, it was one of the best educations I've ever had. David got his degree. We had no money. My father co-signed a loan, and so we were going to be paying 10% interest on half of everything that we were spending. So we had this husky dog and decided we could breed her and sell puppies and make some money, um, which we did. And I kept pretty good books about it, which is not like me, but, and we didn't make any money. Um, <laughs> we broke even, but they were great entertainment. There's nothing like seven husky pups we lived in a 10 by 40 trailer. That's not what the dimensions are inside, though. Um, it was a wild winter, but it was wonderful. You know, the, the kinds of memories are just great. We did manage to sell five of the seven. What's wrong with that picture? So we packed up, we, we came to her, we, we sat down and decided, where do we want to go now? David was from a huge family, and I gotta tell you, marrying into that family as the first in-law was not for the faint-hearted, and I was pretty faint-hearted. Um, <laughs> we didn't want to live in Pennsylvania, so we sat down and said, it's either Michigan, Oregon or Washington, we really liked Oregon, or Vermont, New Hampshire. Neither of us had ever been here, but I had started reading Vermont Life several years earlier, and there was just, I mean, that was what my life was supposed to do. It was supposed to brainwash you into how wonderful Vermont is. <laughs> and we decided that we would, we would go for Vermont or New Hampshire um, because it was closer to family in Pennsylvania. So I sat down and wrote a letter to every school district in the state of Vermont and New Hampshire. And we lined up interviews and we came to Vermont and we Nobody in New Hampshire wanted us. They, they, weren't, they weren't that ahead of the game yet. Um, had interviews all over northern Vermont. I got a job in Morrisville. He got a job at Lake Region. Well, where are you going to live? Obviously, Hardwick is about equal distance between the two of them. And that, that's how we got to Hardwick. Um, and immediately it felt like home for reasons which I cannot define, but it just felt like home. And he, he worked, and I worked, and it was really good. We, had, we brought three Huskies with us. What do you do when you've got three Huskies? You get a dog sled. And so we had a dog sled that we used to run around. And um, I had had a seriously abusive childhood. And in my 30s, I began to come to grips with it. Um, David was wonderful. David gave me the space to be in pain, to be angry, to be needy, to be all of the stuff that somebody who's recovering from a seriously abusive childhood goes through. But after I basically had gotten it under my belt. It was clear to me that there were other things I wanted to do. And David let me do them. David Dow is probably the second most important man in my life. My father gave me life, but David gave me the freedom to be who I was going to be. Um, and because he did, we remained friends. If we had stayed married, by now we would have hated each other. But as it is, every time we saw each other, we were glad to see each other. A few months after I left, we had lunch together, and he said, you know, you were right. He said, we were getting to be pretty nasty to each other. 
And that's not the way we started, and that's not the way I wanted to end. Um, I never said anything about Dave Dow, except I just can't be his wife anymore. He was a wonderful human being, and I miss him more than I ever thought I would. I get one of these things in my emails with all these, these, these word things, and I would immediately send them to him, because there's nobody who loved words more than he did. Um, I'm sorry, you, I'm, I'm happy you went quickly. I'm, I, you know, watching somebody die by inches is no fun. But boy, I'm missing, and I'm really surprised at that. Mrs. Langes. Mrs. Langes. Would you like to sit down? You, you just, I've, been, I've been watching you. You look uncomfortable. I just want you to be comfortable. Yeah. Would someone else like to come up, please? Some memory that you have updated. Oh, come on. Somebody must have something to say. Ah, boy, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do this? So I'm Wes Alexander. I'm a gym teacher. <laughs> Dave and I, I was, got to be with Dave here about 15 years as a colleague. And one memory I have of Dave is like his brother and his wife said about his sense of humor. Um, one particular thing he did a few times, I think I was the first victim, and then I got to watch him initiate other colleagues. <laughs> he told me that they developed a banana that was pre-sliced. <laughs> I don't know if it's my PE background, but I believed him. <laughs> so, I didn't initially, I'm like, come on, I think I lost a bet on it too. So, <laughs> Night out at the flood zone or something. <laughs> so he peeled it for me, and there it was. It all just fell apart, all three sliced. <laughs> and uh, then he showed me the trick that he would insert a needle. I think it took him an hour, he said. <laughs> work it back and forth, take it out, do the same thing down, right on down the banana. And <laughs> that was Dave's sense of humor, which we all love so much. And we're victimized by it times. <laughs> but what a kind, gentle, caring man for so many of us and mentored people like me. So we miss you, Dave. Here's Dave, another Dave. <laughs> Want to carry on in the same vein there, Dave's sense of humor. There are two jokes that have stuck with me over the years, and one of the funniest that still makes me smile when I think of it. And I think of Dave always, and that is. He was nine years old before he figured out his name was not Get Wood. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's going from the family of uh, nine. <laughs> and this other joke that I use in my class too, and the kid's still grown, and uh, here it is. Why was the cannibal afraid to eat the clown? Because he thought he might taste funny. <laughs> Dave Dow Humor, thank you very much. Dave, we're thinking of you, buddy. That's my problem. Anyone else? No other memories? Come on, give me some other memories. Okay, then I will finalize. Oh, no? Good. Thanks, Richard. <coughs> Richard, I'm going to make that. You may use my body you could. Oh. Well, it's, it doesn't have an arrow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Just thinking about things walking in, telling a uh, life story, and the guy before me said something you'll never forget. 
I didn't know Dave real well until he joined Kiwanis Club. I knew who he was. We said hi or whatever, but uh, we worked together on quite a few projects over the years when he was a member of our club. And we were getting things ready for Spring Festival a few years ago uh, and stuff. And we went to my house to pick up tables and stuff. And he says, he says, oh, he says to me, he says, you're from a big family, aren't you? And I said, yeah. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm the oldest of eight. Uh, he said, well, what? I said, well, how big is your family? He said, well, I, he says, there's nine people in my family. I said, well, that must be great. He said, yep. He said, when I was a kid growing up, he says, he said, we're in a town in Pennsylvania, I think, is where you grew up. He said, yeah, and the, and the local priests who knew the community came over to our house and yeah, to visit us because since we're such a large family, he thought that, you know, like I told him, said, we're a large Catholic family. He says, Dave's family said, was not. <laughs> so I, I thought that was cute, the way he says that. So he came over for a visit, but he found out we weren't Catholic. He said, okay. <laughs> Cheers to you, Dave. Thanks. Collier. I'm the president of the Heart of Qantas Club, um, and David was such a devoted member of the Qantas Club. One of his dear and dear uh, projects was the basketball, I mean the, ba the bike helmet project and bike rodeo that we, we do. Um, we haven't done the bike rodeo in the last couple of years, but we will be doing the bike helmet, uh, giving out free bike helmets to anybody that needs them. Um, that I think Spring Festival next weekend, and it will, of course, be an honor, David. But he, he was hard and fast. He was a Kiwanis member. He was devoted. He, all, he gave us all hell. When we weren't doing things the right way, we knew about it. We heard about it. Um, but it, there's a hole in the beans now, and we miss him. Hi, I'm C.P. Carton, and I taught with Dave. But what I wanted to talk about that hasn't been mentioned um, goes along with something that has, which is um, uh, Dave's love for words. I had the privilege of um, many evenings spent with the Weasons and the Battens and with Dave, where we would just get together and have a meal and then, um, and then play a game. We'd go to each other's homes, and it was especially wonderful in the winter, you know, when you just need to get out and have a few laughs. And, and I think, my memory's terrible, but I think the name of the game he loved the best was Balderdash. But it wasn't, it wasn't the packaged one. It was one that he made up himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we would just, you know, draw pictures and make up words and laugh and laugh and laugh because it was just, he loved it, and so, so we all did. So it's, it's just one of my fondest memories of him. Um, the other thing about Dave was, for me, he was the Southern gentleman. Now, it's not that Pennsylvania is that far south, of course, but there was a gentility about him that I didn't experience with anybody else, and I just loved him, and yeah, I miss him too. Um, I had, my name is Dale Pritchard, I had the pleasure of teaching beside Dave. And the thing I remember is his sense of humor. He could say what needed to be said in very few words, but it was great. Um, he also was a practical joker. And the story that he told with great glee, I even remember the young man's name, which was Scott Bailey. And Scott used to take Kleenex. And he would take 20 or 30 out of the box. And for Dave, that really annoyed him because he also valued things and he didn't like to see things wasted. So one day, Scott went to take the Kleenex and the mousetrap got him. <laughs> <laughs> Scott looked at Dave, 
Dave looked at him and he said, Scott said, well played, Mr. Dow. Well played. <laughs> and that tells you a lot about Dave. He knew how to do the practical joke, but he also knew when and how to do it. My name is Andy Leader, and I was a math teacher for just one semester here. Um, and Dave was a good friend and a great support for me. When I first arrived, this little kid came up to me. Uh, I was on a leave of absence, actually, from People's Academy down the road in Morrisville, where most of my teaching career was spent. Uh, this little kid comes up to me, hands on his hips, says, my name is, and gives his, I won't embarrass anybody by saying his name, uh, and we've got rid of two math teachers so far this year, and we're going to get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, that was my welcome to Hazen Union. Uh, <laughs> my, uh, incidentally, my wife, who's over there, uh, her grandfather, actually lived in Hardwick and worked in the quarries here. Um, anyway, uh, Dave was a great support to me, uh, along with uh, Gene Hackett and Hazel Greaves, uh, who were also very supportive. But I knew Dave also for many years afterwards as a musician. Uh, we were both members of a group called the Knicks, which stands for Never in Public. <laughs> and we, uh, we used to play banjo and fiddle together, and um, I was actually thinking of playing a, a little banjo tune, if people don't mind. So uh, I'll, I'll put this down and get my banjo, which is over there behind my wife's seat, and I'll, I'll give it a try, if you don't mind, for a second. Some cold 
son, he was a brother, he was a student, an intelligent person, he was a great friend, he was a husband, he was a teacher, he was a coach, he was a runner, he was an active community member. He was a tennis player, he was a golfer, he was a leader, he was a president, he was a worker, he was a banjo player, he was a card player. But best of all, throughout his journey, he will be remembered as a kind, respectable individual. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>